The shoes that you wear are messing up your feet. And like a chain with a broken link, it impacts everything else in your body. The cushion, the heels, the tight toe boxes, they all stop your feet from moving the way that they've evolved to over thousands of years. And if you concentrate, concentrate really hard, you might be able to feel it right now. The unnatural softness in each step, that tug of your toes being pulled together when you slip your shoe on first thing in the morning, luckily, it's very easy to fix. And over the next few minutes, I'll help you take your foot out of the cast and make you the strongest that you've ever been, no matter your age. And that starts by looking back, back before cars, before concrete, to when our ancestors lived a life of survival, where our version of Walmart was the Great Plains and our credit card was persistence hunting, outrunning our prey. And that's how our bodies evolved. Upright, very narrow hips with a spring-like arch, muscles for stability, strength and protection, even fat pads and calluses to protect us from whatever sharp stick or upturned plug we came across. As we spread throughout the landscape, we came across harsher and harsher environments with the earliest known shoes found in the state of Oregon in the United States dating back to 7000 BC. But they were sandals, they were made of tree bark, very foot shaped and clearly there to stop stabby things doing the stabby. And that was all fine and dandy. The foot could still move naturally and they definitely didn't have bunions, hammer toes, dodgy knees and sore backs unless they'd been whacked by an angry mammoth. So how do we get from tree bark sandals to $400 big red boots? I'll tell you exactly how. Rich people got bored and started to play the age old game of big dicks. Fast forward to the middle ages and all of a sudden the earth's dynamic has shifted. We don't need to run after food anymore. You just build a fence around it and then you grab a chicken when you're getting a bit peckish. So some very bright spark thought about how they could get one over on their mate and dreamt up the poulain, which you might have guessed was made from very expensive materials and worn by the upper class and people of status at special occasions. And since they were designed to be worn infrequently, comfort was not really a consideration that went into making them. Now, let's take a moment to reflect on that. What generally happens in society when something new and cool comes out and only the really rich people can afford it? Say, a phone or a new car. I want that too. And we pin a poster on our wall and we start our vision board and we make our dreams come true. And that's what happened in the Middle Ages. So as shoes became more popular, the rich folks started passing laws restricting the type of clothing you could wear to stop the lower classes from looking too rich. Now, at one point, you could tell where somebody stacked up in society by looking at the length of their shoe. The longer the toe, the higher the class. Then shoes began to develop high heels, which you guessed it, demonstrated social status and wealth and then it came all about big shiny buckles and materials. And progressively, we find ourselves here, stuck in this spin cycle between fashion and a drive for sales, where people wear uncomfortable or overly comfortable shoes on a daily basis in the name of appearance and status and end up with all sorts of issues as a result. Bunions, hammer toes, plantar fasciitis, Achilles tendonitis, weak angles, weak knees, ACL tears. Believe me, it's a very long list and it affects a lot of people. Luckily though, I am not the first person to notice. People have been flirting with the idea of barefoot shoes since 1999 when a power geek shoe duo, shoe designer Robert Fleury and Vibram CEO Tony Post started developing the very first barefoot shoe as a solution to the knee pain and soreness that they were getting when they were running. Now that ended up sparking some research which injected a big fat dose of scientific credibility into natural running. So they released their now very infamous five finger shoes. If you're subscribed to the channel, you'll probably know that these shoes have featured in both the five barefoot shoes I love and the five barefoot shoes that I hate videos. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, press that button down there. Once the five fingers dropped, the cat was well and truly out of the bag. And even though they weren't perfect, the barefoot movement snowballed from there to what we have now as the blueprint for barefoot minimalist shoes. They need to be super flexible so that your feet can move naturally. They shouldn't intrude on your feet in any way, particularly the toes, so they have a nice and wide toe box that lets your body achieve a really nice natural base which helps improve your balance and your stability and three there's no drop there's no cushioning they're just completely flat now that last rule has got a bit of leeway particularly with the cushioning you've got very pure and very traditional barefoot shoes like these the vivo barefoot primus trail which are about as minimal as you can get short of putting a layer of cling film over your foot and calling it a day 
And then you've got something like the Bahi Revive, which has got all of the other characteristics, but also a little bit of cushioning, which makes them really good for transitioning into barefoot shoes for newbies or for doing long distance stuff. Both of those are linked down below in case you want to check them out. So why has the industry exploded? Why are you sitting here watching a video on a channel that I've built and dedicated to all things barefoot? Quite simply, because it feels good. It really is that simple. Fortunately, the barefoot movement is growing at an incredible rate with a bunch of different companies like Vivo Barefoot, Feel Grounds, Zero, Lems, loads more, producing some really, really high quality shoes that look nothing like the five-fingered founding father. You can find some examples of my favorites on the channel. And if like me, you like free stuff, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to be in with a chance of winning our $1,000 barefoot giveaway. Details about that are all in the description down below, but all subscribers get automatic entry. So has my barefoot journey been plain sailing? No. There's definitely some things I wish I'd done better when I got my first pair of barefoot shoes all those years ago. One, I wish I'd known more about how to transition from normal shoes to barefoot shoes. Namely, there's no rush. If you're used to cushioning and then you take it all away, it's going to take your body time to adapt to it. So definitely don't go crazy. Don't replace all of your shoes overnight. You can find more information about this and get personalized transition targets in our barefoot transition guide linked up here. Two, you can accelerate your process from normal to natural feet using toe spaces or by using toe socks. Normally socks have got elastic around the toes which pulls them in together. So doing something about that will definitely help speed up your transition time. And three is I guarantee even with numbers one and two, your Achilles and your calf are going to get tight. So take the time to stretch them out, get a ball into them if you can. If you have a massage gun, get some bonus points, stick that in there even five minutes a day will make a world of difference and you're not going to regret it. Hands down though, this is one of the best things I've ever done and five years in, I can't see myself ever going back to normal shoes. My feet have changed, my body is stronger than ever and all of the knee and plantar fasciitis issues I used to have from years of playing rugby are completely gone. Sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is strip back the complexity and focus on simplicity. Make sure to check out this video over here where we go behind the scenes of the channel and climb a mountain at night. I'm sure you're gonna love that one as well. As always, thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.